Hey everyone, it's TK Friday. On today's episode, I wanted to pull together a lot of the different things I've been showing you in the recent TK Friday episodes. Think of this as more of a deep dive into saturation vibrance masks with some lab color thrown in. I really want to bring some color balance and harmony to this image and utilize a lot of the things that we've been learning in the past few videos. So let's get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me today on this episode. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Today I want to work on this image and it is TK Friday and um, I did some basic adjustments here in Lightroom and I'll just show you over here. I adjusted the exposure, opened it up a little bit. I thought it was a little on the dark side. By the way, here's what the original image looks like. So there's the before, any adjustments in Lightroom, very flat and here's the after. Okay, so it's moving in the right direction. So some exposure adjustment here, a little bit of contrast. I pulled back in my highlights, opened up my shadows a bit set a white and a black point and gave myself a little extra room on the right side and the left just in case I get a little too aggressive in Photoshop. I want to protect that. I didn't do any presence adjustments as per usual. I don't really do those adjustments because I haven't noise re Reduce this image yet or sharpened it okay it's an image of iso 1000 so all i need to do is use sharpen ai on it just to sharpen it and get rid of the noise i'm going to save that for photoshop the other thing i've done to it was uh the hsl color and i did no vibrance or saturation adjustments there i did try those it wasn't really going in the right direction for me so i just left those off and because remember i'm going to be working with color in in photoshop with the tk7 panel and actions and so i got hs color hsl color here let's open this up and the only thing i did in here was i thought the reds looked a little too hot so i pulled the reds back so let me go ahead and reset this i just felt those reds were a little bit too hot so i went ahead and pulled back on the reds to like a minus eight and that's all I did right there. And then the other thing I always do is under detail, I have my sharpening turned off and my noise reduction off, but I keep my color noise reduction at 25, the default setting for Lightroom. I find I get the best results when I go into either Sharpen AI or Denoise AI when I do that. And I have videos explaining why I do that. So you can go back and watch those. And the other thing I always do is lens corrections. I remove chromatic aberrations, enable profile corrections, and then I'll send this into Photoshop. Now it's already in Photoshop, as you can see, here's Photoshop and it's already there. Uh, but to get it into Photoshop, all I do is go right click the image, edit in, and then I would come up here to edit in Photoshop 2021 and it would fire up Photoshop. Now it's in Photoshop. Now in Photoshop to save time, I've already uh, ran it through Sharpen AI to remove noise and sharpen it a bit. And um, the other thing I did was I cleaned up the background a little bit because take a look at the original image here. See this light area right here? I didn't like that and I didn't like these leaves up in here. So I, I removed those as well. So let me go back to Photoshop. You can see I removed those. I'm going to do some more videos on how I do some cleanup because I, I use different techniques and I have videos on my channel showing you how I do that. But I, you know, I use brushes, I use healing tools and things like that in Photoshop, but this video is not about that. So I wanted to get that stuff done first. And now we're going to work with the TK7 uh, panel. We're going to start out with an action first in the TK7 combo panel, this panel right here. And our actions live right here under TK. So we click this here and we're going to be using the RGB lab uh, action first. Now I used that, I believe in my last TK video, but you're going to see it again today. Cause remember I'm trying to pull things together today, but we're also going to use saturation and vibrance mass. And I'm going to show you something a little different with a saturation mask, something I haven't showed you yet. So stay tuned for that one. So let me go ahead and click this action. It's going to send us into the lab mode and this action does it all for you. You don't have to think we're going to just simply in here, get ourselves a curves adjustment layer. And I can just click this right here. This will get us right to the curves adjustment layer. Now, remember in the lab mode, you, it's a little different than when you're in the RGB mode where we typically work in and we have lightness we have the a component and the b component we're going to start out with the a component and i'm just going to add some color contrast here so i'm going to equally pull up on the left side of the curve and the right side so here we go i'm just going to take this triangle and i'm going to move it over and watch these input numbers i'm going to take this over to i think like around 103 
And then I'm going to take this right triangle slider and move it into a 103. The other was a minus, and I think this will be a positive 103. Okay, and now I'm going to go to the B channel. The, the secret here is keep these all in harmony, okay, if you want to maintain the same color, but add some color contrast. So now I'm going to take this to a minus 103, keeping everything in balance here. Okay, 103, and then we'll take this slider and we'll move it over to a positive 103. And that has added more contrast. Now let, let me show you here. Here is the before and here is the after. You see that? before and after. Now my reds are getting a little too hot in here, but we're going to work with that. Don't worry about that. I think it looks good. And if I wanted to, I could come to the uh, lightness channel and let's go to the lightness channel. If I wanted to open up the midtones a little bit, I can pull up on this and maybe just open up the midtones. I'm watching my histogram. I do not want to, uh, you know, blow out my highlights or clip my highlights. So I got to be careful here, but I might just open that up just a tiny wee bit. What do you think? I think that's okay. Here's the before and here's the after. Now, the cool thing about the action is when we go ahead and come back to TK actions here and click RGB lab, it'll close this and send us right back in to, uh, RGB. We'll come out of lab and go right back into RGB. And the action does it all for you and it really makes your life easier. So here's our lab adjustment, but you'll notice if I come up here to, uh, let's come up here to image and we go to mode, you'll see we are in the RGB color mode. So we're back, we're out of lab. Here's our before and here's our after. Now, of course, we can take the opacity and pull this back if we want to, but I'm going to leave mine up because the next thing I want to do is work with the weaker colors because I feel my greens are a little bit too weak here and these reds are a little bit too hot, so I'm going to work on those as well. But to do that, I'm going to work with a vibrance mask. So we're going to come up here to the S slash V saturation vibrance uh, icon. Click this. We're going to click on a vibrance mask. We're going to start out with one. Now watch the histogram here. And if you watched my other video on saturation vibrance mask, you'll know how we make this adjustment here. So this will be a nice refresher for you. So we have the histogram here. I'm going to go and watch this histogram start to move to the left as I go through these numbers. I'm going to go to two. This is so simple to do. Two. And now we're going to go to three. I just want to get it to touch the edge there. Now take a notice here. The light areas are going to get the adjustment because I'm going to output this to a hue saturation adjustment layer, okay? But you'll notice here, remember I said this this area here was red. And what I want to do is, is pull that back a little bit. Now you may say, well, how are you going to pull that back, Dave? This is dark here. Well, it is dark, but remember this, it's not black. Like this right in this area, this is black, but this is a dark gray. So when I pull saturation back on reds, you'll see that that, uh, that saturation will pull back, but the mask will control it, which is beautiful. And you'll see that here shortly. But that's the mask I want. I just want my histogram to move over to the left. Now, all I need to do is click this icon, which will open up a hue saturation adjustment layer. So click this. And here's my hue saturation adjustment layer. And here is my layer right here with the mask attached to it. Now, if I click this icon right here, you can see what that mask looks like. All right. So remember, all my adjustments will be going through this mask, which is going to affect different things differently different areas of the image differently due to the mass. Like these darker areas will get less adjustments. I can go really strong on my adjustments here, but they won't get altered a whole lot, but they'll be altered in a beautiful way. And you'll see that very shortly. So let's go ahead and get our image back. So we're going to start out with the weaker colors would be like the greens around here. I think these greens need to be brightened up a little bit or become a little more saturated. So what I'll do is take the overall master and start to pull this saturation to the right. And when I do, it's being adjusted through the mask. Can you see that? Watch, if I take this up a whole lot right here, you can see my greens are really coming out. My reds are getting a little bit hot here. They're getting adjusted, but not as much as the greens. But I'm going to just look at the greens and I'm going to say, you know what? I think they look good right around here. Let's see. Here's the before and here's the after. You see that? Now check this out. Watch if I were to shut this mask off. Now see this little X here on your TK7 combo panel? If I click this, watch the image. 
Look how ugly that adjustment is, right? Because there's no layer mask attached to it right now because it's X'd out. But look how awful that adjustment is. But look how it's very nicely tailored due to that mask. Let me shut this off and put the mask back on. Do you see that? You see how beautiful that is? It's really does a great job. And that's what these masks are all about. They really help you to get very beautiful and accurate adjustments. So that's the master. Here's what I really love about these masks and working with the hue saturation adjustment layer. Not only do I have saturation, but I have hue and I have lightness. And I have this master area here where I can control all the colors at once, or I can click this and I have all these different colors inside of here because I noticed this yellow when I pull up, pulled up the master, it got a little too saturated in yellow. So what I'm going to do is click on yellow. Take this saturation and start to move it to the left. And watch how aggressive I can be here. I can take out that yellow in here. I'm going to leave some of it in because I think it looks nice. But I want to bring harmony and balance back to this image so I can pull this back. So that's the yellows. The next thing I want to do is work in this red. Because remember I said this red got a little too hot when I pulled up the master. So let's go to reds now. And remember, let's take a look at the mask one more time. It's dark, but it's not black. So let me go ahead and go back to the image. Now watch when I take this saturation. It looks a little too oversaturated here, but watch, I'm going to take the saturation of just the reds and pull this really strongly to the left. In fact, I'm going to take it the whole way off. Can you see that? I hope you can see that. Not much is happening, but I've pulled off that very hot red right there. I've actually removed the saturation 100%. But the mask is protecting most of that red. It's just taking off the really hot reds. I hope you can see it. Here's the before and here's the after. But right there. All right. And then the other thing I want to work on is blues. I don't know if you can see that, but you see, can you see right here? There's a bit of a blue tint here. I don't know if this is going to show up well in the video, but let me go ahead and click on blues. And... I'm going to take the saturation just so you can see those blues in there. I'm going to move it the whole way to the right. Can you see the blues around the edges here and in here? All right. Let me go ahead and reset set the blues by double-clicking saturation. I'm going to take the hue slider now. Do you see the power here? Take this hue slider and, and watch these blues right in here. I'm going to take those more into the magenta and see how I can just clean that right up. Now, I can go too far and they'll start turning yellow. But there's a spot right here, and you just... Drag the slider, but watch the image, and right, right there, that cleans it right up. So I shifted the hue on blue. And the last thing I want to do is pull back on the magentas a little bit. So let's go back up into this drop down and click on magentas. And let's ease off in the magentas a little bit. See, I can, again, if I take the magenta the whole way off, I still have magenta in there. You see that, but it's being affected through the mask so I can get really accurate adjustments here. So I just want to ease back on the magentas just a wee bit, maybe somewhere right around there. Now let's take a look at my overall before and after. Here's my before and here's my after. So I use the vibrance mask just to bring out some of the weaker colors. And I use the hue saturation to tailor all the colors just the way I want. Now let me go ahead and shut off this mask and see what the adjustment would look like without that mask on there. So you can see the power of this vibrance mask. Here it is without the mask. Pretty crazy, isn't that? That's what it would look like right there. So you can see what that mask is doing. Again, there's the result. But here it is, those same adjustments without the mask. So check that out. And if you can wrap your head around the mask, that's a good thing. If you don't understand what's actually happening here, that's okay too. Just know that it works. Watch the video again and try this and you'll see, oh, I love this, Dave. Thank you. And I really appreciate sharing this with everyone. I appreciate all you guys that watch my channel and gals. I could actually stop right here, but I feel I have just some saturated colors that are just slightly oversaturated. So I'm going to use a saturation mask to take care of that. And I'm going to do something that I've never showed you before. This is a little bit different. So follow me on this one. I'm going to come back up here to the S slash V icon for saturation vibrance mask. Click it. I'll take the number one saturation mask and modify it with this levels adjustment. And what I want to do is the darker areas I want to get darker, the lighter areas I want to get lighter. Because remember, the lighter areas in the saturation mask are the, the most saturated areas. So what I'll do is take this slider. 
on the left side of this levels adjustment. Move it to the right a bit. See, I'm making this area dark here. And then what I want to do is make these lighter areas a little bit lighter so they'll take the adjustment a little bit stronger. So I'm going to take the highlight slider and bump it to the left a decent amount. But I don't want to lose my feathering action. See, I'm getting some lightness down here. So I can take the midtones and slide it more to the right and just it gets rid of that. You see that? And I have a pretty nice mask here. Now I want these lighter areas just to be a little bit lighter. So I'll move this highlight in a little bit. And this is how you just tweak your mask. Just like so. Right there. See, this is going to get the most adjustment because it's lightest up here. But I maintained all the feathering in here. So pretty good, pretty good shape here. Might move this over just a little bit. Right there. There we go. That's my mask. I'm going to output it to a hue saturation layer. And here's my layer, and there's my mask. And if I click this icon again, you can see what the mask looks like. Now, the light areas will be getting the adjustment. The black areas will get no adjustment. The darker gray areas will get less adjustment. So let's go back to the image. Now, let me take the saturation, and let me just show you here. I'm going to take it the whole way off. But you see how I still have color in my image because everything is being adjusted through the mask. If I were to shut the mask off, let me click the X. I'd have a black and white image, okay? Let me double click the saturation and reset it. And all I'm trying to do is take the edge off the oversaturated colors. And I'm using that saturation mask to do it. So I'm gonna take this slider and start to move it to the left. And you can see, watch that green leaf up there as I move, start to move to the left from zero. I just wanna, it's easing back a little bit, but some of these hotter reds and magentas are coming back a little bit too. I don't wanna go too far, but just a little bit. But maybe right around there looks pretty good. Now, let's see if we can see a difference. This is a very nuanced adjustment. It's not a big adjustment, but it's a critical adjustment because I'm crafting my image. Remember that. So here's the before and here's the after. So I'm just easing off on the oversaturated colors. Now, if we take a look at our overall image, here's our, let me option click the background layer. We started with this. And now we're here. The last thing I want to do is add a vignette to the image because if you watch my last video, it was all about vignettes and spotlights and how important vignettes are to draw, draw you into your image. So let's just add a basic vignette and you can do that very simple, very simply with the TK7 combo or CX panel, depending which one you're using. Just come to the actions and come up to vignette. It's the very first action right here. Click it and it's going to apply a vignette to your image. Now it's going to give you a radius for whatever your image is. It's dependent upon your image. Just click OK. And there is your vignette on the image. Now let me show you. Here's the before and here's the after. Just see, it just draws attention into the uh, flowers here. Now it might be a little too strong, so I'm going to take the opacity and simply ease it back a little bit. So I think maybe around to 30. Here's the before and here's the after. You can hardly tell it's there but it is pulling you into the flower itself. For now, I think I'm done with this image. Uh, if I wanted to do some more editing on it, I could always come back to it later, but what I'll do is I'll just save it. So I'm just gonna come up here to file and click on save, or I could have used the shortcut of, of command or control S to save it. And it'll be saved with all its layers intact. Now, when I go back into Lightroom, it will be there for me. And I could always reopen it back up again with all its layers and continue to work on it if I felt I needed to. Well, there you go, everyone. The image on the right is the original raw file unedited. The image on the left is the edited file. And normally this type of adjustment that I did today, this type of an edit is really quick. It would have probably taken probably 10 to 15 minutes tops. It's really not that hard to do, but explaining it takes a while. And I want you to get it, as I said. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today and give it a try. If, uh, if you liked the video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.